but by the grace of God we were we are supposed to talk like this Israelites <laughs>
You've heard from God. It is God who is writing those good plans in your life. But let me show you this. When you plan good, and when you start to do good, the kingdom of darkness, they plant snares in front ahead of you. If you want to build and you start thinking of building is good, you want to build your house is good you want to finish your house is good it is from God it is God speaking in your life but the enemy who is the enemy Satan who is the enemy of good things once you start to plan good and you talk of the good things you want to do he start setting up snares he start putting traps ahead of you that is why you always hear this common talk when you start to do something good you hear people talking like this we give him three months we give him six months he won't go far with these things it is not just mere people talking that but it is the enemy who is against God good things. It is not just words that are being said. It is the snares, the traps that are set ahead of you. Every successful person must be ready to walk upon the snares and the traps they say it's the kingdom of darkness sets before you. Because there is no easy walk in life. Particularly to success. There is somebody who hates success. And there is somebody who does not want to see a human being succeeding. Because once a human being succeeds, Satan knows that he cannot have access into that person's life. Because he knows that confusion and failure makes him thrives. When you fail, you are hurt, and when you are hurt, you know, Satan thrives in your heart and in your mind. And as Satan look over his sega, Okota Guanya got him and a can every person cannot worship God better. But a victorious person will worship God better. Now, the author of this book, he says, if the Lord was not on our side, Logo Ingi. Israel must confess this because Israel, Israel was is a chosen nation of God but this nation was in slavery in Egypt they did not just get released in Egypt 
and there were promises of God upon this nation. And God had to demonstrate his power to deliver them from the hand of the oppressor. And they started a journey to the promised land. But that journey to the promised land, it had so many Snares. It has so many traps on the way. I cannot chronologically explain all the troubles that they came across on their way to the promised land. But just to mention few, you think of Mara. After coming out of Egypt, where they were drinking fresh water every day, and they come to this place, the water is so bitter that they cannot drink it. You talk of the venomous serpents that the fiery serpents that emerged in the desert. You talk of the hunger. You talk of people, the earth split and were swallowed alive. You talk of rebellion. You talk of uh, 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 so many things in the desert. Until God came to this conclusion that all who were 20 years and older when he delivered them out of Egypt they will not enter the promised land except two people Caleb and Joshua and he said all of them will not enter and even Moses did not enter the promised land because there was a lot in the desert but the, the, the remnants the people who remained who survived or the descendant of the people who were remnants now someone writes he says, if the Lord have not been on our side, we would have died at Mara. Those snakes would have killed us. Hunger would have killed us. But thanks be to God. It is the same in your life. When you start to take a journey to do good in your life, you cannot avoid opposition. You cannot avoid battles in your life. It is the same when Harvest Time Church was born. It did not just grow up without challenges. A lot has, would have happened. The church would have died the day it was started. I cannot stand here and count all the things that will, would have become the problems to the church. But we have seen it. We have had it with our ears. We have experienced it with our bodies. We have walked and lived among it. We have passed our Mara. There, was, there were moments when it was even it looked like it was a curse to be a member of the Harvest Time Church. And some of the things I cannot stand here and talk about I'm on the public platform. Because as we continue to go, people will come and confess things. Things that were so shocking 
But by the grace of God, we were we are supposed to talk like these Israelites and say, if the Lord has not been on our side. swallowed us alive. They, have, they would have swallowed us alive. They are anger kindled against us. And I have seen that. One day I was about to preach right where the church started. And when I'm about to go to the pulpit, a woman entered with her children. Not coming to church. Coming to me. And she said, she called Moholo. She said, I wanted to be the witness. But I could see that she was too angry. I pulled her aside to the dining room. She said everything she would say. Which I cannot repeat. The church is on. I must preach. We are stuck. And she was challenging me that she's going to the police station and she wants to call the whole of Guyana so that we go to Guyana Stadium. Because I think I pray too much so that I must go and prove myself there. I'm trying to be good. I looked. The church, they are waiting for you to preach. And the meeting is not ending and it's not a nice one. Meeting I have to find a way to end that meeting. Because the dining room is here, the church is here. And I went to preach. You see, when you are on a journey to do good, Satan will put snares. Will put traps. And those are not just ordinary traps. And the traps that are ordinary. And sometimes you will sit, sit and think. God, if you say you have called me, you have called me for this. The only thing I don't like in my life is quarrels. I don't enjoy quarrels. They hurt me a very long time. I rather work alone without quarreling. Because I'm not that type. I don't have facts in quarreling. Even if I'm right and you're wrong, once we quarrel, it hurts me. Even if you're wrong, it hurts me a very long time. Took my Bible, stood there. I preached and blessed people. I can't tell them what is happening. Because I'm not a storyteller. 
These are some of the snares. If you want to do good, and if God has planted a good thought in you, and a good heart to serve, be ready for the snares. Anyone who cannot face snares, he is part of those who are putting snares for other people. But those who are determined to do good, whether you do good to your child or to your spouse or to your pastor, be ready for snares. But I hear this man saying, they would have swallowed us up alive when their anger was kindled against us. Then the flood would have swept us away. Would have become history. Will be pointing from far and say we were once there but we have been swept away because we could no longer stand it. There are times when challenges just come like a flood. The torrent would have gone over us. But blessed be the Lord who has not given us up as prey to them. I fear God for one thing. He will never donate you to Satan. No. I fear God for one thing. He will never donate you to Satan. No matter what. Doesn't matter how bad you are. You are the image of God. And God will not donate you. Even if Satan is too hungry to swallow you up even if Satan is so angry at you that you have big shoulders this day he will not give you as prey to Satan if he was able to give us a spray to Satan, I would have long been donated to Satan. I have seen guns put on my forehead. You look at a person putting an AK-47 on your forehead and you have just finished praying and it's not talking to you. He has come to kill you. I just sang. I just kept on singing. 12 o'clock midnight in the bush. What do you do? This is another snare. Three times, not once. But I stand here to say to you, we have to celebrate this God 
all of us. You might not be testifying. I am testifying because I was there in the beginning of this church. But you can testify because you have been there in the beginning of your life. You can also testify because when you came here, you have seen the grace of God upon your life. But I can faithfully declare as the prophet of God that the snare is broken. The snare that would have trapped me, trapped you, is broken. You, you are free. You are free. <laughs> there are no more snares ahead of you. Hallelujah. Amen. 24 years. And 23 years serving God full time. Because I quit my job 23 years ago. But after the service on Sunday, on Monday with Apostle E, we drove to Free State. We just arrived today. And we have to be in church. And we're driving all the way. Because Moshe is admitted there is doing his masters. Last week we drove to Jobek. Mushori is admitted there is doing his BCom degree, our last born. These may look like it's nothing. When you have not had what I have had 23 years ago, when I quit my job, I had words in my ears spoken. What shall your wife eat? How shall your children go to school? Because you are quitting your job. I said, I'm no longer living to eat. I'm living to be fulfilled. There is something that makes me feel not fulfilled in my spirit. Every good thing you do, whether you are asked or not, there is a question behind you or before you that you must answer. But you must know that as you walk with God, God answers every question that has been put before you. It is because of these reasons that I want to invite you that we go and we Go before the throne of God. We say, God, I don't know how many traps have been laid before me. I don't know how many snares have been set before me and my family and children. But today I just want to thank you because I am convinced in my heart that I will not have come this far but I only came this far because the snares the landmines the, land the time bombs the time bombs have been broken and God is still standing before us 
faithfully so. And in the year of prosperity, you are succeeding. Whether Satan likes it or not, you are a success story. You are a testimonial. You are a revelation. You are a miracle. Those who don't know where you come from, they will argue with you. They will debate with you. They will try to stand on your way. But you, because you know where you come from, you will simply say, God, if you have not been on my side, if you have not helped me to raise these children alone, if you have not helped me in my studies, if if you have not helped me when I was neglected, when I was thrown through the window of life, do you know that many people that I have sat with, they have walked a long journey alone in life. Very long one. I know that. Because I have seen that. But today they are no longer alone. Because God being with them has raised many for them. We want to thank God. Some of the things, I can't say them here. I only give you a hint. Because I'm not moving backwards, I'm moving forward. By the grace of God. But I'm here to say to you, to remind you that your snares are broken, have been broken. You are a free person. You are a free person. You are better than yesterday. You are better than where you come from. Even if you cry today, your tears are no longer hot. Your tears are better than yesterday's tears. Even if you were to call your children, grandchildren, and cry together, your tears uh, have changed. It's a good cry. It's a better cry. It's a great cry. It's a cry of seeing mercy and grace all over your life. All over your life. I sat inside a car of this young man who I have seen him struggling ever since he joined our church. Being the best learner, distinctions in mathematics and physical science, staying home, no school, no bursary, nothing. Now he's almost 10 years later. Uh, he came that I bless his car. I said, How does it feel? He says, it's like I'm dreaming. It's like even this car is not mine. I'm driving it, but it's like it's not mine. But it is mine. He said, but it is mine. But it looks like, I just feel like, it's like I'm dreaming. Me, inside this car. Ah. We open up our arms. 